She is a beauty. And he has to work outside because the garage is filled with Subaru. <laughs> well, for one, the engine runs noticeably cooler. There is plenty of evidence to suggest that it does take care of the engine and helps keep everything well lubricated and helps it live a long service life. Why do you turn it on and let it run for a little bit before you start this process? It warms the oil up. It makes it drain out easier. All right, so I'm going to start with the engine oil. And first thing we're going to do is we've warmed the bike up so that the oil is nice and warm and it'll drain out easier. And I'm going to pull the plug up underneath and let it drain out into a pan. For the engine oil, the plug is right here. That's the one we're going to be taking out. It's right up here and it's on the side and comes in from the front of the case. And what were you saying? What size hex? <laughs> it's actually a 16 millimeter socket, not a 14 millimeter socket. That's what you get for thinking you know what you're talking about when you really don't. So loosen that up with my ratchet. What I'm doing is I'm loosening the engine dipstick so that it can get some air because it is draining really, really slow. And I don't want it to come out so fast that it splashes out of the side of my pan. Okay. So I'm going to let that drain while the engine oil is draining out. I'm going to go ahead and pull my air cleaner off so I can clean the air filter. Get the air filter off. It's a T27 Torx head bit. There's three screws to take off. So we started using a KNN air filter, which is a washable cotton gauze air filter. I'm going to take this over to the wash tank. I'm going to wash it out and we'll blow it out with some compressed air after it gets rinsed. So I'm just rinsing the filter out with some solvent. You can use brake cleaner for this if you don't have a parts cleaning tank. And all I'm doing is just flushing the old air filter oil and the dirt that it's collected over the miles. Just flushing that out. And then I'm going to use compressed air and I'm going to blow it out to get the element clean. Not using a lot of pressure because it is just a cotton gauze element and I don't want to blow holes in it. But I am blowing it from the inside out, so I'm blowing the dirt out of the gauze and not through the filter into where the engine would suck it up. Now 
I'm just going to set that aside and I'm going to let it air dry while we finish doing the rest of the service on the plane. Just to keep dirt out of the engine while we're doing the rest of the service, because we do live next to a dirt road, I'm going to stuff a rag in the intake. Okay, looking underneath. Our oil is finished draining out. So what I'm using is a filter kit from Amsoil for our bike. And along with the kit comes a filter, four quarts of engine oil, and they also include a new O-ring for the drain plug. So I'm going to go ahead and put that on. The drain plug has a magnet on the tip of it, so if there's any metal from the engine parts wearing, you'll find it collected there. This one was clean when I pulled it out, so I know I don't have any metal issues going on. Stick the new ring on there. I'm going to put just a little bit of engine oil on it. Just enough to make it wet so that it'll slip in that bore in the bottom of the engine and doesn't fold up on itself and get pinched and cut and cause a leak. Now the manual says the plug needs to be tightened up from anywhere to 14 to 21 foot pounds. I'm going to put mine at 15. So what I'm doing is I'm going to a smaller torque wrench. I'm converting foot pounds to inch pounds. So 15 foot pounds is 180 inch pounds. Okay, for changing the oil filter. Filter. I found an oil change kit on Amazon. It gives you a special funnel that slips up underneath of the oil filter to help keep you from making a mess because it lays sideways so when you unscrew it it dribbles oil but because of where it is up beside the engine it runs down all over the coolant lines and the wires and the little uh, cover that covers up the water pump on the front of the engine we'll look at it from the other side okay. and also picked up oil filter wrench that you need that has a cutout on it to go by the crankshaft sensor on the engine. The filter, or the funnel is not 100% foolproof, so to keep from making a mess, I'm going to put a rag down in here underneath the filter. I'll slip the funnel in here. Up my drain hose down into my drain pan. Now something else that I like to do to try to keep from making a mess is I like to punch holes in the filter so it can drain. And I'm just using a long sharpened chip, sharpened punch. Punch a hole in the bottom of the filter. So, if you can see in here. Yes, sort of. Right where my finger is. There's, there's a sensor here for the crankshaft in the engine. And my old filter wrench has a cutout that lets it go by that sensor without messing it up. If you try just a regular oil filler wrench, it won't go by the sensor. And if you force it, you'll end up damaging the sensor. my 
rag back just to make sure I didn't get it caught between the filter and the base. And then I'm going to use my tool and I'm just going to snug it up. I'm not going to make it real tight. There's that. Now we can put the oil back in it and that part will be done. So the Hartley manual says to add three quarts and then do a cold level check. Let it warm up and check it again. dipstick has two different readings you have this side here which is a lower level is for when it's on the kickstand this side here is for when it's upright as you can see we're on the full mark when it's upright but you still have to start it still need to start it and after I start it and we run some oil through the engine and the filter you check it again we'll check it again and I may need to add a little bit so now I'm going to drain the transmission. The plug for the transmission goes straight up from the bottom to this hole in this plate underneath the frame. It's the same size as the engine plug. It's a 16 millimeter. This one's got a magnet on the end of the plug. I don't have a whole lot of metal on here. The first couple of times I serviced the bike, I did find some metal on here. But like Aaron said, we only had 10,000 miles on the bike when we got it. And we were putting a lot of miles on it. So I don't know if it's because of switching to AMS oil or the transmission just finally got fully broke in that we quit finding metal on the plug. Either way, I'm happy about it. Yep, I'm changing out the O-ring on this plug as well. When I ordered this funnel kit from Amazon, I was also ordered able to order a pack of 50 of the little O-rings that go on the plugs. I'd rather change them out every time rather than take a chance that one doesn't seal and you end up with a leak. using the AMS oil transmission fluid as well, you can run the same oil you run in the engine in the transmission. But when I saw AMS oil specifically offered a transmission oil, I decided to go with that and I've been using it ever since. And what I have noticed since we've been riding it is that the transmission has gotten quieter and it does actually shift smoother. Once again, I'm going to snug it up with the ratchet, and then I'm going to hit it with the torque wrench. When it clicks, it's tight enough, and that is the transmission. So now we're going to move over to the other side and drain the primary. So before I drain the primary, or take the plug out, I always crack the cover loose so that it can breathe and it drains out better.
this case is where your main chain from the engine to the transmission runs and where your clutch runs. So it's normal when you pull that one to find a little bit of that metal debris on the end of the plug. That doesn't look excessive, so I'm not that worried about it. primary case and the transmission are now all drained out. I'm going to go ahead and finish taking this cover off because this is how you fill the primary. A lot of the older bikes have a paper gasket that goes around here that you will absolutely need to replace every time you service it. This bike has a rubber o-ring and so far it has stayed in good shape it still looks like it's in good shape so i'm not going to replace it this time it's still soft it's not mashed or marred up and it doesn't have any gouges or digs in it so i have no reason to think that it's not going to stay sealed This one here is made specifically for putting fluid in the primary case. It goes right in the hole and makes it really easy to fill it up. the transmission and that will take care of changing the fluids. Um, normally as part of a regular service I also check the belt tension for the drive belt, check air pressure in the tires, check all the lights, check for any play in the swing arm, um, and for it 40,000 miles I'm going to take a look at the brakes. Uh, I'm going to raise it all the way up and spin the wheels, check the wheel bearings, check the headstock bearings, just look at the fluid levels for the front brake and the clutch, make sure the fluids don't look dirty, and go through the manual and see what else they recommend for 40,000 miles. Filler plug out of the transmission. I'm going to fill it up. Book calls for 28 ounces of transmission fluid. Now, not quite a full quart. cap back in the transmission. So now I've just got to put it filter oil, can in filter oil, back on the air filter before I put it in the bike. There we go. I'm just gonna run drops of it across the element all the way around. The oil will spread out and it's the oil on the gauze that helps make the dirt stick to it.
tube here is a breather tube from the engine. There's a small hole here in the back of the filter. You have to tuck that tube in there. All the fluids have been drained and changed. Yep. We'll let it down off the stand, start it up, warm it up, and then recheck the engine oil. See that it's come down a little bit since I've run the engine. So I'll need to add a little bit to it to get it up to the full mark. on the full mark. Okay, that is all. That is all. So we are gonna say bye now so we can clean up our mess. We'll see you later.